Yep, that's Raven! Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 disguises worn on that So Raven. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the craziest, funniest, and most memorable disguises from the hit Disney Channel TV show, That's So Raven. Number 10. Boys in Motion Boys, we are the boys in motion. We give you our devotion. Raven, Chelsea, and Eddie are known for donning crazy costumes and causing trouble, but they usually don't impersonate real people. Dad, it's Trey, JJ, and Ricky, how you doing? Oh, no. Raven somehow gets the world-famous boy band Boys in Motion to agree to perform at her school, so naturally, she brags to the entire student body. Then make them sing at the music festival tonight. But when the boys bail last minute, it is up to Raven and friends to fool an auditorium full of screaming fans. Something ain't right about those boys. Despite the costumes being surprisingly accurate, they just don't have the right motion in their disastrous performance to make anyone believe they are the boys. Number 9. Reptile Raven After having a vision of Cory telling her that he hates her, Raven does everything she can to throw him the best birthday party ever. She even hires Cory's hero, Reptile Rick. Oh, this guy named Reptile Rick. Reptile Rick's coming to my party? He's even more fun than the zoo! Hey, everyone! Reptile Rick's coming! <laughs> As one would expect, everything goes horribly wrong. You're not supposed to eat that! My parents got sick from that! Reptile Rick gets sick. So to save the party, Raven treats Cory's friends to Reptile Raven. Voila! Iguana! <laughs> Knowing absolutely nothing about the animals she must now perform with, hilarity ensues as Raven struggles to entertain the partygoers by dancing with an iguana and wrestling a snake, or at least a snake-stuffed animal. I guess that's why it hasn't been eaten the mice. Number 8. Sunshine Hello, I'm Sunshine. The school is whipped into a fanatical frenzy when popular singer Rainbow comes to perform. But things go awry when Eddie accidentally locks her in a closet. Get us out of here, Cloudburst! I can't, girl! <laughs> Somebody help us! Ain't nobody here, you! Everybody went to your show. <gasps> what show? There's not gonna be a show! This is a disaster! While stalling for time until Rainbow and Eddie are freed from their custodial containment, Raven attempts to tame the near-rioting students by disguising herself as Rainbow's hippie opening act, Sunshine, and performing an impromptu set. My first song is called The Ballad of the Salad. Raven's costume hits right on the nose with the long flowing hair, headband full of flowers, and trippy voice. Oh, what a Number 7. Coffee and Cream I'm coffee! Yeah! And I'm cream! <laughs> and you are stone cold busty! There are two foxy mamas you just don't want to mess with. The stars align to make these 70s-themed costumes happen. While preparing for a 70s night at the Chill Grill, Eddie gets psychic powers after the light from a comet passing over San Francisco bounces off of a disco ball and gets zapped into him. After his newfound abilities get him in trouble, it is up to Raven and Chelsea to save him. Funny thing, there's nothing funny about me losing my money. See, because when I lose, you pay. Inspired by an old school 70s show appropriately titled Undercover Disco Divas, Raven and Chelsea dress up as a detective duo complete with bell bottom pantsuits and giant afros. We are two foxy mamas you just don't want to mess with. Number 6. Mall Cop. Got you! <laughs> well, well, well. After having a vision of Cory getting caught shoplifting, Raven comes to his rescue the only way she knows how. She borrows a Mall Cop uniform, as well as some fake facial hair to complete the look, and spies on Cory to make sure he does the right thing. Cause to me, it looks like we got a little situation on her hands. <laughs> Despite her cover nearly blown by the oversized costume and the facial hair, both of which refuse to stay in place, Raven somehow manages to hold it together long enough to fool the real mall cop. I forgot. I didn't pay for these. Ow! Oh, yep, that was a 1027 mustache burn. Ow! 
Number five, Sassy's general manager. Chelsea, I want you to keep a really close eye on that guy over there. Raven's most culturally significant costume is also one of her best. The truth is, I don't hire black people. Raven has a vision of a store manager confessing that she doesn't hire black people. So she, Chelsea, and Eddie team up with a reporter to catch her in the act. Raven goes undercover as the new Sassy's general manager. Whenever Raven dresses in drag, she always still looks like Raven, but this time, her disguise is very convincing. That's right, I am Marvin C. Sweetback! I am the named new general manager of Sassy's International, they said. She stands face to face with the store manager she met previously without being recognized. She fools Chelsea. She even impresses herself with this one. Oh, snap! <laughs> Number four, the invisible plumber. Raven has a vision of Eddie and Chelsea possibly kissing, which is clearly the end of the world as she knows it. Because, Dad, we have always been a threesome. If they become a twosome, then I become a onesome. Then if they break up, we become three onesomes, which is definitely not as good as one threesome. Funnily enough, Raven actually does try to handle the situation the mature way this time, simply asking Eddie and Chelsea what is going on between them. But the two won't fess up their secret. Hey, so what's going on with you two? Mm -hmm. Nothing. So Raven dresses up like a plumber and fixes Chelsea's bathroom in order to find out the truth. Hello. Hey there, little lady. I'm your plumber. Uh, Y'all just keep on doing what you're doing. Uh, I'm called the Invisible Plumber, so I'm just gonna be invisible. This one is particularly funny because this time, she has to fool her own friends. The giant belly and painted-on beard create a believable disguise. Unfortunately, the hole she drills in the bathroom wall gets the real plumber in trouble. Hey there, uh, make sure you got one of these in your kit, plumber's loot! Number 3, Mrs. Baxter. Raven gets in trouble with a vindictive teacher, and her mother is called into school. Stars of the man. Good idea! Why don't you and I... Toss it around tomorrow after school, and hey, let's toss in your parents too! In an effort to avoid getting into trouble, Raven dresses up as her own mother to fool her teacher. Look down! This is a highway, not a freeway! Considering that the two have never met, you might think that simply putting on her mother's clothes and aging herself with makeup might do the trick. But Raven never does anything halfway fake teeth, a bright purple outfit, and for some reason, a butt so giant, she can't even sit down properly with this disguise. Raven's first over-the-top costume set the bar for her hijinks for the rest of the show. Number 2. Life-Sized Raven Statue In an act of friendship, Chelsea shows Raven just how much she means to her by making a life-sized statue of Raven as a raven. But Raven accidentally breaks the statue right before Chelsea presents it at an art show. So in her own act of friendship, Raven covers herself in clay and replaces the statue. Can't believe Ray actually put it back together. It looks great. Thank you. Hey! This disguise is one of the show's most interesting, because this time, Raven is impersonating herself, just in clay and feathers. Appropriately, the statue gets praised for its lifelike quality. Very interesting piece, quite lifelike. Posing during the art show proves harder than Raven imagined, especially when she eats a jalapeno popper and can't take the heat. Chelsea, let your art speak for itself. What Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Uh, I'm Bill. And, uh, I'm, I'm Bob. Last names. Uh, Bob. Bob, Bob? Yeah, Coach and I'm Bill Bob. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're cousins, right, Bob? Bill? Uh, ah, see, even we get confused. Ah! The super There's something weird about Captain Pepperoni. Oh, you have no idea. Well. Eddie, uh, this is a seance. <laughs> Please make your acquaintance. Hey, well, uh, I'm Edward. Charmed, I'm sure. Number one, lasagna. As usual, Raven's attempt to prevent an unfortunate vision from happening is exactly what makes it come true. You are totally lucky to have him. Tons of restaurants are dying to hire him. Really? Oh, is that so? <laughs> Raven accidentally causes her father to get fired from his restaurant by the new snobby owner. And then he said if I had a problem with the way he wants things done, that I should go work at one of the tons of restaurants that were dying to hire me. I don't even know where he got that from. When she sees he has a weak spot for celebrities, Raven hatches a plan to get Victor his job back. Yes, famous person's coming 
Welcome to Augustine's. Welcome to Augustine's. Two steps back. In arguably Raven's most memorable disguise, she dresses up as a flamboyant pop star with Chelsea and Eddie as her entourage. With the clout of her fake fame and the power of music, they cause a hilarious and overdramatic scene, furious that Victor is gone, and turn the restaurant into a spontaneous pop show, demanding the owner bring him back. It's undercooked and poorly seasoned since Victor left the food's no good. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.